Good afternoon, John. Afternoon, George. How are you? I'm in good form at the moment, thank you. The sun's been shining. Um, and considering there's a lockdown on at the moment, I've been incredibly lucky. Um, I've been doing plenty of gardening, cutting a few trees down. My sister uh, came over to see my dad. It was his 93rd birthday on the 5th of March. She came over for that, and then she couldn't get back to Ireland, so she's been staying down with him, and he's driving her mad, so she's been helping me in the garden, so it's brilliant. So I've had a free gardener for six weeks. Oh, happy days. We've been very lucky with the weather, haven't we? Unbelievable. Well, l listen, lucky if you can get outside. But I mean, poor people, if you're stuck in a, in a flat somewhere or a, a terrace house in the middle of Swindon, um, it's miserable when the weather's nice. If you haven't got a garden or somewhere to get out and, and kick a ball or do something in, we're blessed. No, we are very lucky. Um, are, are you glad that I made an effort for you this evening? I'm very good to glad, glad that you put a tie on. You know, standards have slipped a little bit, George. I didn't, I didn't really want to mention it. I can see your bowling ball in the background. I can't quite see where the finger holes are. Um, or is that maybe that's a crown pin bowling, is it? Um, I'm not sure which one it is. But anyway, you know, going back to your appearance, um, if, well, it is just slightly not up to class, is it? Years ago... Everybody used to ride out with a shirt and tie on. And you, and you saw people who went to football matches, you rode out, all the lads, all those old people, people who would have a, a tweed suit on, a cloth cap, and a shirt and tie. Now, people just rock up, they ride out in Wellington boots, and just whatever they want. It's extraordinary. Yeah. I actually thought, felt like I was getting ready for a date tonight when I was having a sh shower and putting a shirt on for you. Well, was it a blind person? You obviously were <laughs> making much of an effort. I could say the same about you with your hair. Did you, have a, moment. did you have a wash? I did, yeah. For, all for you. Good. Good. Very good. And have you already had your supper? No, Nicola's in the kitchen slaving away. How's your weight been since, um, since your accident? So I weighed myself last night for the first time for, I don't know, for a while, and I was 12 stone four. Were you? Yeah. And what, what, what was the lightest you ever did when you were riding? Well, I suppose the last um, few years, probably the last eight or nine years, I was, my bottom weight was nine stone. And what was the rest of you weigh? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, you're not, you're not you know what a big ass you got. So that was nine stone. What was the rest of you? <laughs> yeah. I say you're you're not very different from your riding weight, are you? Um, no, I'm about seven pounds. I'm, you know, I'm exactly the same weight as I was when I went to the interview with Fred Winter when I was sixteen. I was oh, eleven so four. That was a very good story, what you, what you said to him about what's the lightest you've been. Abs Do you know what? It's absolutely true. He was the most wonderful man to work for, incredibly loyal. I could not have got or gone to a better person, but no sense of humour whatsoever. And when he said to me, what's the lightest you've ever been? And I said, about seven pounds, three ounces. Never even, not even the corner of his mouth didn't go up. And it was amazing that we stayed together for 15 years and we never hardly had a crossword in 15 years. He was, a, he was an incredible man, but no, no humour. I remember the painting, he had a black cat and we were cleaning the stables out one summer and the cat came in the cage boxes down the bottom. So I thought it'd be quite fun to put some white stripes on it, make it look like a little zebra. But one of the lads let the door open. <laughs> it went out and ran through the cat flap and back indoors. <laughs> oh, he wasn't amused. <laughs> um, I actually saw a very good interview the other day with um, Gary Moore, and he was saying you were how stylish you were when you were back riding. And I, I actually, I was going to text him and say he's never seen you play golf. No, I've, I'll never win a prize for style at golf. I honestly, I, I must have practiced every day of this lockdown, and I'm definitely worse now than before and I, and I was pretty shocking beforehand. It's, it's, it's pathetic, it's cruel really. I mean, I, nobody could try harder and get worse. It's extraordinary. <laughs> yeah. I've, Actually, I've, I've, every, see, uh, Gary Moore, everybody used to say, oh, Gary Moore, he's not very stylish. 
he was a really good rider, Gary. Could ride anything, used to ride with a good length of um, stirrup, and I always rated him as a jockey. Yeah. Might not have been the most stylish, but he was a very good horseman. Well, and I think that's, tra- that's transferred to his training. Isn't he? He's very good at working horses out. I worked for him for a long time, and he, he's, a, just, he, he's got a, a great way of getting horses off other people and working out what they need to, to improve them, if that makes sense. But he's a grafter, isn't he? Yeah. And, and he's, he's bred to be a grafter. His dad was exactly the same. He used to be a car dealer down in Brighton. And, you know, Gary used to ride anything and everything, you know, go around Plumpton and Fontwell and he'd be pushing away. Be, he'd, be off, he'd be off the bridle going down to the start on most of his horses. And, you know, he still used to ride plenty of winners. Um, have, you been, have you been keeping on Clive Cox's horses? Yeah, I've been down there. It's very interesting. I spoke to uh, Gemma... Um, from uh, Racing Well for today, whose husband Simon is a vet up in Newmarket, and she was saying he's been a bit quiet because most trainers are only sort of getting keeping horses at 90% fitness levels. And I said that to Clive today, and he said, You said you don't just hardly have any trouble. You know, it's only when you go that last 10% that they start getting injuries. Uh, but at the moment, they all look good. He's got those two really nice three year olds, uh, Positive and Golden Horde. Yeah. Um, Golden Horde is oh, the most gorgeous looking horse. He's by Lethal Force. He might, well, he probably is the best Lethal Force that there's been so far. Um, no, really and if like it comes it's around, whether well, it's going to be the July Cup in July or might even be a bit later, depending on how the planning goes, um, he's certainly one to keep on the right side of. When do you think we're all going to get going again? Um, I, I think it'll be interesting what, what news we get on Sunday going forward with um, how the lockdown, if they're going to ease off a little bit. I think that lockdown will continue for a period of time. And I would have thought probably... Has Boris been on the phone to you to ask you advice? No. No. I'm surprised he hasn't been on the phone to you. <laughs> well, that you are. <laughs> honestly, he, I could see his number came up. I wouldn't answer it. He goes on a bit, so I just <laughs> left it. <laughs> I thought he'll, he'll get hold of you at some stage. No, he oh, probably all you want to talk about is that blooming baby. Boy, you sick to death of hearing about it. On that yeah, note, on. it's very good to speak to you, and it's great to see you looking so well. Very good, and fingers crossed that um, that everybody stays safe and that we're back in action shortly. Top man, I'll speak to you soon. Good lad.